What do pamphlet hunting girls have in common? Two things. One, they both need an EMF meter to catch them. Two, sometimes believing in some of the stories PMF company tells you are as far-fetched as ghost story themselves. So today, we're gonna investigate. Joke aside, hunting ghosts where an EMF meter can be fun. But spending your hard-earned cash on PMF device based on ghost story, eh, I'm not too sure about that. Not here today to cut down the industry as a whole, but to be honest, some of them make sure make me feel it would be easier to catch ghosts sometimes. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to try to understand their specs. Is it even possible? But number two, their claim of Gauss, Tesla, and power, and the ultimate claim of magical frequency that only them have. And three, finally, what is the solution to all this madness? Do we just give up? Maybe just start hunting ghosts? Here's a prime example. Remember guys, we're not here to cut down companies, we're not here to talk about them. I've never tried their equipment, I've never measured them, so I have no idea what's going on. Maybe one day we'll be able to raise some money, we can start buying them and taking them apart and understanding them. That'll be fun. Like here, this company says 1 hertz, and this company says 1 to 50 pulse per second. I mean, they're not lying, but why not everybody uses the same, this is the same chart, right? 1 to 50 pulse per second is 1 to 50 hertz, so we'll just call it for what it is. These guys right here, they just give you the gauze, the weight, but they tell you, like, is this part of digital? And that's because they're super high voltage, and they like to um, basically zap the coil with super high voltage, which makes a lot of electron flow, and which creates lots of gauze. And here we have the frequency range, and then we have the power, and then they tell you what kind of wave they, they are doing. I don't know what a soft curl wave is, I'll have to look it up. Um, but a sine is a sine wave, and then you got your sawtooth, which is like the chain on the chainsaw. That's what they look like. And then the square is a square wave. We're going to be talking about that today too. Also going to be talking about um, the coil thing, like how many coils should you have, and etc. So as you can see, they really, they don't make it easy. Like here, they, they, they use fancy U Tesla. This one, they call it just a gauze. Here, they call it U Tesla again and gauze. And here, they call it just gauze. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're just gonna define a gauze. Gauze is just a unit of measurement. Uh, just like a degree Celsius is the unit of measurement of temperature, a gauze just measure magnetic strength. So nothing too complicated here. I found over the years that many companies involved with PMF device make well, what I would call perpetual motion machine, not PMF device. <laughs> what I mean by that is that the power input measured in the watts most of the time does not match the claim that the, the output that their unit makes. The laws of physics are called that for a reason can get more energy out than your input in the first place. That's called conservation of energy. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. All right, nerd alert, nerd alert. We're gonna do a little bit of uh, physics. We'll try to keep it light, guys. Just bear with me. I made a calculator too. I never showed this to anybody, but uh, here we are. And just so you know, right, we're not going to worry about all the formulas and stuff like that, but um, I always measure my coil right around 47 gauze, 45 to 52 gauze always seems to be where my coils are at, right? So here's is going to be our uh, Tesla and gauze answer, okay? Uh, they're 90, 95 millimeter, which is in meters 0 0.095, okay? Mu, don't worry about mu, it's just a constant and we're just we're going from there that's the um, permeability of the air and then n is the number of turns remember we always do 95 turns and then four amps is roughly what the the machine does all the time and if you come up here i see we get 50 gauss per coil so that kind of gives us an idea of just a guess right like it's nothing super accurate but it's accurate enough for what we're doing and this is usually what I use to find out how they build the machines and stuff like that. 
Let's just do one just for fun here. And this is what we're talking about, the conser conservation of energy, right? Let's say they claim uh, it's a 120 volt, 45 watts. So the formula tells us that it's a 0 0.375 amps. So 0 0.375 amps. And they have, the coils have eight wraps. So we're gonna go with eight wraps. And the coils is 45 mil. So it'll be 0 0.045. So it gives us 0 0.84 gauze. And on their claim, they're claiming eight gauze. So I don't know if because they had 10 coils, they're adding them all up together, but I don't know how you can go from 0.8 gauze to eight gauze. So something was fishy there. I wanna show you guys something. We're gonna keep this example going right there. But the gap, which is a circle, like the donut, the size of the, the donut. I wanna show you when I make this really small, uh, 0 0.001, look what happened to the gauze. 37 gauze and so just remember the smaller the donut the more power you get right that's is one way of doing that let's say we have a, a one meter donut size you see how very small amount of energy we have this is going to get really clear in a second just bear with me just remember that Think of electromagnetic field the same way you would think about a light. The smaller the donut, the more focus the energy beam is. In this example right there, you can see the table has a lot of light on it. And I'll show it in red. But there's a lot of cold spot around the rest of the room, so we have really focused light beam. The big question, how much? For how long? and what frequencies and waveforms should I use? Remember, this is my opinion based on the research that I've made. You should do your own too. Don't get yanked around and don't chase every news flash. The following information is based on the meta research that uh, was conducted by a few scientists. So in case you didn't know, meta research is a researcher that researches research paper. Oh, that was a mouthful. So how much gauze should you sit on? Well, 35 to 55 gauze per coil. For how long? Five minutes to four hours. And then what hertz and waveform should you sit? One to 300 hertz square wave. Square wave is king. If there is a holy grail in PEMF, it's where it is. Since there isn't much more to go on, beside the ghost stories that the PMF company like to tell us sometimes, I like to stick to the research paper. Um, it's the best we got for right now. And so I don't try to reinvent the wheel. I just follow the research paper. Okay, another alert, another nerd alert. We'll do a little more physics again. We'll keep it light, we'll keep it fun. You need to understand this so you see why I build the pen the way I build it. It's also gonna give you so much knowledge when you have to buy your own or build your own or choose to get one of the units we make here together. So buckle up again. Here comes some really interesting stuff that is really light. It's really simple, by the way. Let's start with comparing magnetic lines of force to topo elevation line. The brown line, they represent an equal elevation. Yeah, like, you know, they don't exist. You won't find them when you walk on the trails. You won't see the brown line crossing either because that would mean that the ground has two different altitude. That ain't a thing. Drawing of magnetic lines is the same thing. They're not real and they do not cross. I don't know what you're about to say. What about this? Uh, they look awful real, don't they? But it's an illusion. You sprinkle iron five times, you'll get five different patterns. They're very similar, but they're not the same. That's because they're not actually following some magical line in space. They're just getting magnetized and sticking to each other. It's a total random process. Magnetic line cannot be blocked. It can only be redirected. Think of it as putting a reflector behind a light bulb. You're simply redirecting the magnetic line, making a more focused energy beam. And this is why sometimes you see me on my videos, I use a metal plate to put behind the coil. And finally, we're gonna talk about the, um, the coils. If the magnetic field in opposite direction, do they cancel each other? 
well they don't i'll show you in a graphic how that happens if they're parallel and in opposite direction they do cancel each other but it's because they're vectorial in nature but that's not what we're talking about right now we're talking about let's say i have a coil facing north up this way and south this way and the other coil on the mat is facing south this way and north that way that has a negative impact on each other that creates a cold spot but i'll show you that on the graphic and you'll you'll fully understand why it's really important to have them facing the right way so here we are with the coils all facing north on the mat up there's no cold spot nice and uniform and here it is when you go one north and one south you get cold spots that happen in between for our purpose this is the shape we need all the coil needs to be facing the same direction so we don't get cold spots there it is guys another video done we did a lot of physics a lot of really high-end physics talking I guess but I have to take you with me on this journey I mean we have to have the basic together and I promise you know we're gonna keep it light all the time but this is really important for you guys to know and understand why we need to build them out the way we build it so you can pay attention to all the details I have a lot of information to disseminate I have a lot of stuff I want to talk about but a little bit at a time and together we'll make a difference. Talk to you soon. Oh, mm -hmm.